boasting that he was a Christian. I've met, I've met a few people like that. I've met a few people like that. Now, what does the Bible say about such people? I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about those people who say that they have been Christian and are no longer Christian. Let me read it to you. And I'm sure this man would like to hear. That is Christian love you're showing this. You just explained. And in the words, we have it in the words of Peter. Murdering each other. Now, this is Peter's words. Listen to the words of Peter. This is what Peter no, says. No, I'm not repenting. I've got nothing to repent for. Peter no. says in his second letter, second letter. and chapter really? 2, well, chapter right, 2, James. remember these words. Peter. He says this concerning those who have believed. I can't hear him. He says this. I hear you. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if, 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 after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. You see this man, he doesn't even want to listen. No. He doesn't even want to listen. An He's an unreasonable. An well, yes, that's why you're so unreasonable. Christians are reasonable. This man is not reasonable. He's lost his reason. He's lost his reason. Thank you, sir. You were never Christian. In 2 Peter chapter 2, we are told, for if, if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better, it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You see, anybody, anybody who claims to have been a Christian and then have gone back from being a Christian into the world, it's happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his vomit again. And the sow, the pig, the female pig that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You can never be a has-been Christian. Once you're a Christian, you're always going to be a Christian. Because God preserves his people right the way through to the day of judgment. So they can't be a has-been Christian. But if they are of the nature of the pig and the dog, they will go back. If they're of the nature of an unclean animal, which those animals were in the law, the Jewish law, they will go back to their old ways. But if they are a sheep, and Jesus Christ says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. If they are sheep, they're clean animals, and they'll follow the lamb whithersoever he goes. They'll follow the shepherd, because he's the shepherd of the sheep who lays down his life for the sheep. And sheep, you know, they don't follow anybody. They follow their shepherd, because he provides them good pasture. He leads them beside still waters. He, even though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they don't fear because he's there and in an eastern middle eastern sheep hole the shepherd lies across the door of the sheep so they have walls in the middle east in their sheep hole and he lies across the door so that if the wolf or the lion or the bear or some other wild animal comes to try and devour the sheep they has got to go to the shepherd first and our lord jesus christ laid down his life for the sheep he had power to lay it down and he had authority to take it up again. Nobody took it from him. He had the authority to do that. And so the unclean animal, the pig and the dog goes back to its old ways because it's got a dirty nature, because it's got a bad character. But the sheep follows the shepherd 
wherever he goes because they're clean. They've been cleaned by the blood of Jesus. They've been cleaned by the word of God that he has spoken to them. They're clean animals. They're not dirty animals. And that's why they don't go back. No Christian who's truly born of the eternal Holy Spirit of God will ever go back. No Christian will ever go back to his old ways. He was never a Christian because he never bore the marks of Jesus' cross in his hands and feet. He doesn't have the marks of the nails, the nail prints. He's never been crucified with Christ. He was just one of those seeds that the sower says it falls on the stony ground. But when the sun beats down upon it, it shrivels up and dies. And so some see it never comes to perfection because it's in the stony ground. And that man who said he was a Christian, he was a stony ground hearer. He was not a true believer. Had he been a true believer, he would have followed right the way to the end. And a true believer goes on to the end. No matter what comes against him, he'll still be there at the end. Like Stephen was when he was being stoned to death. Stephen was being stoned to death. What did he do? He said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. He saw the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And that's what we have seen as believers. We have seen the face of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you need you have to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. You have to come to God as a wretched sinner, knowing that you're doomed for hell because you deserve to go to hell, because you've broken the holy law of an infinitely holy God. And that's why you deserve the damnation of hell. Jesus Christ was willing to come into this world and pay the penalty. I'm so glad, my friends, my hat off to you who have stayed to listen. I'm so glad that he paid the penalty for all my sins. And I bear them no more. Let man try and bring them up. I point them to the blood of Jesus Christ. They overcame the devil, the accuser of the brethren, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. This man obviously loved his life. That's why he went back. But those who are Christians, they love not their lives unto death. And so the, 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 you know, you know who are true believers. You know that true believers are willing to put up with anything. True believers will go through anything for Jesus' name's sake, because they're true believers. And when the trials come against them, they only become purer gold, purified in the fire. They become purer and purer and purer the more the trials come against them. Look at the millions in Syria who have come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You thought that war would have made them all go away from God. On the contrary, millions more have come to know God through the suffering of the believing Christian people, even in that land of Iraq and Syria. Praise God, his purposes are past finding out. Man means it for evil to destroy men's lives, but God turns it for good. And that's why we rejoice today that so many millions of people in the world are coming to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and turning away from the confusion of religion the religious cults, they will bring confusion to you. What you need is the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God. And that alone can make you victorious in this world of sin. To him that overcomes, Jesus said, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. And I'm set down with the Father in his throne. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Oh, my friend. It's all in there. It's all in the Holy Bible. That's what that's that's where we get all the wisdom. It comes from God. Jesus Christ is our wisdom. John, it's book of life. Yes, it's the book of life. Yeah. Jesus said, they're not just words in a book, you know. My words are spirit and they are life. 
spirit and life. When you embrace the word of God, you know that it's true. You don't need anybody to tell you because you've tasted and seen for yourself that the Lord is good. That's what the psalmist says. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's no one to them of yet. Oh. 